Okay, everyone. Uh, welcome back to General Chemistry. Uh, we're going to be starting the second semester, um, and in this semester, we're going to be focusing primarily on um, sort of a new s set of things that are a continuation of what we learned in the first semester, but it introduces kind of a whole new way of looking at chemistry. And in the second semester, the concepts that we're going to be addressing are how quickly do reactions take place, and once we know how quickly reactions take place, in sort of what direction does a reaction go? So uh, chapter 13 is gonna focus on something called uh, reaction kinetics, which is how quickly does a reaction take place? So up on through Gen Chem 1, we've looked primarily at um, what are the qualitative aspects of a reaction? What bonds are being made? What bonds are being broken? Can we predict the products of like a metathesis reaction? Um, are electrons being transferred? So we talked about all of that, but one thing that we never addressed is, you know, how quickly does the reaction actually take place? So in lab, you guys kind of saw this. There were some reactions that took place um, very quickly, like a precipitation reaction could be instantaneous. And then there are other reactions, like when we did the KClO3 experiment, we had to heat it up for a while. And then once it got to a certain temperature, it happened very quickly. So in the second semester, we're gonna to start to address those questions of, you know, how quickly will a reaction take place? When it takes place, is there a way that we can measure how quickly it takes place? And then what's even more important is, can we determine whether a reaction is going to go in the forward direction or in the reverse direction? And we're going to get a little bit more into that when we talk about something called equilibrium. Um, these concepts that we talk about in chapters 13 and chapters 14 are going to be very important as we progress through the semester because we're going to be looking at how this is applied to a variety of different systems. So we're going to look at this in terms of acids and bases. We're going to look at this in terms of solubility. And then we're going to look at this in terms of electrochemistry and thermodynamics. So, um, so that's kind of the outline for this semester. Now with chapter 13 in particular, we're going to focus on reaction rates. So we're going to start by discussing what a reaction rate is. And we're going to talk about two different types. Then we're going to introduce the idea of rate laws, which is basically a way in which we can construct a mathematical equation that will describe um, how experimental parameters like concentration will affect the how quickly a reaction will take place. So in essence, we're going to be able to change something about a reaction and then see how much that affects how quickly the reaction takes place. And then we're also going to look at how we can determine the rate uh, the rate law from experimental data. This is called the method of initial rates. So all of that kind of looks at how we can determine the rate and how we can work with the rate. Now in the second major topic, we're going to talk about what we call integrated rate laws. Integrated rate laws are um, an extension of the rate law, but in this case, rather than looking at the rate itself, this uses the rate law to figure out how concentration changes versus time. So this will allow us to make predictions about, you know, if a reaction has a certain um, rate constant or a certain general rate, um, if it goes for a certain period of time, what, how much of the products will be made and how much of the reactants will be left over. And then we'll, be, we'll look at things like graphing kinetic, kinetic data and determining the reaction order. Then in the latter part, we're going to talk about temperature and reaction rates. So in the beginning, we kind of talk about concentration, and then as we move along, we're going to see that temperature also affects the rate of a reaction. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, thermodynamics. We're going to talk a little bit about how reactions take place in terms of collisions. And we're going to develop a picture for what we call potential energy um, for both endothermic and exothermic reactions. And then in the last part, we're going to talk a little bit about reaction mechanisms. So we're going to look at how reactions actually take place um, and, you know, what steps can be built up to um, give us an actual reaction uh, mechanism. And then finally, we'll also talk about catalysis. So now let's look at some of the resources that are available to you on Blackboard. So what we have is we have the drill questions just like we had last semester. So these are the multiple choice questions that are extra practice. We have thir chapter 13 slides, which have all of the problems that are in the video that you're going to see for chapter 13. Um, we have some homework solutions for different problems. Uh, and then the biggest one for this one is the integrated rate loss handout. So the integrated rate loss handout goes through and it shows you um, all of the different 
rate laws and how you derive them. Now you don't need to know the derivations, but you do need to know the solutions. So this provides you with a sort of a summary of the solution for the integrated rate law and the half-life solution for zero, first, and uh, second order rate laws. And you can take a look at this. And this is a good thing to have uh, with you because this has all of the solutions in one place. And it's a good summary of, of how things are um, derived. We will look at the deriv we will look at a single derivation for first order in the videos. And then if you'd like to learn more about how to derive the other ones, you can take a look at this sheet.